What's going on, everybody? My name is Ben, and welcome back to the Great War Group Build. This is episode number two for our Newport 17 by Edward 148 scale. I'm really excited to jump in today, guys. So let's go ahead and pull out the instructions and see what it is we have in store for us today. So in typical Edward fashion, we're going to be starting out in the cockpit. We have some painting to do and some assembly. Now for the paint, they call out for a wood color. We do have some Tamiya Brown, which I could use, but I'm leaning a bit more towards using an oil mixture that I did for the Albatross, except darkening it just a little bit. So we should be able to play with that and get an oil color for both the cockpit and the sidewalls, as well as the cockpit floor. That's going to be really cool. Also, we have to paint the seat, and the seat itself is a photo etched part. The photo etched parts are really, really nice with this kit. There's not too many, but there's just enough to add a bit of extra interest. The major part we're going to have to build today, though, is that seat. It does require a lot of folding and a lot of work there to get that lined up. Then we're going to need to prime it, and we're going to need to paint it. The cockpit itself is very similar in color. We have the front half of it being that wooden color for the side walls and for the front area. And the rear part of the fuselage is going to be a sail color. Now, I don't have anything marked sail, but sail is very similar to Tamiya buff. And that I do have. So we're going to be using that as both a base coat and as a primer for all these different areas like the cockpit, the fuselage, and the cockpit floor. So let's go ahead and get to work here on the photo etch so we can get those parts ready to go so we can hit everything with that buff color and then we can go ahead and start doing that wood finish. But before any of that, like I said, we have to get those photo etch parts built. So on to the seat. Let's see what we can do. All right, guys, that actually wasn't too bad. We were able to build the seat, and as a bonus, we built the throttle. So you can see here, it's very tiny, but it is made up of three different parts, which is pretty cool. But that's all for right now. We're gonna put the photo etch away. We're gonna move on to some paint. Like I said before, we're gonna be using some Tamiya Buff. That should be a perfect primer and a perfect base coat. So we're gonna add a little bit of isopropyl to the airbrush, spray it through just to kind of lube everything up to get everything ready for the paint. And then we're gonna add a little bit of the Tamiya Buff in there, mix it up with whatever's left over for the 70% isopropyl. I'll be able to spray it through. Give a little bit of mix here with the back of my paintbrush. There we are. And we'll give a little bit of a test spray as well because I wanna make sure everything is flowing nicely and it's not clumping. So let's go ahead and give a little bit of a test spray onto a paper towel. Looks good. All right, let's go ahead and prime and get everything painted up this buff color.
All right, guys, that buff color is awesome. I love it. It's a perfect base coat and very nice primer. So we're going to move on to these areas right here. As you can see, there are these dimples that are at the tail all the way up to the nose. And there are four total on each side of the fuselage, as well as a pipe. We'll need to do something with that as well. What I'm proposing we do is go ahead and hollow these out to give them a bit more depth, because that's where the rigging is actually supposed to go. So I want to make sure that there's enough of an indentation so we can get those easy line glued right into those little holes. I'm going to use my hobby knife as usual. We're just going to round out those little dimples, make them a bit more pronounced so I can really have a good surface to glue that easy line right into the areas. Then we can go ahead and stretch it out, tie it off and glue it where it needs to go, both on the ailerons and on the wings. Now, I don't want to go too deep. Unfortunately, though, I might push through. And if that happens, that's fine. Doesn't much matter. I just want to make sure there's enough material in there so that the super glue and the easy line will bite. And I'll be able to have a nice, secure connection point. So let's go ahead and clear out the rest of these holes just with the hobby knife. And then we're going to turn our attention over to some of the pipes. Like I mentioned, there are two pipes, one on each side of the cowling. I'm not sure what they are, maybe vents of some sort, but we're going to go ahead and hollow those out as well. I'm going to use my hobby knife again, just like I did for the other areas. But these are actually slightly larger, so we're going to be able to use my pin vise with my very, very smallest drill bit possible. That's going to really make sure these edges of these pipes are really, really thin. Should give it a nice look. So just a couple of spins here with my pin vise. We should be good to go. Perfect. I love it. Looks great. Now we'll take a little bit of the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. We'll drop it right into each of these holes to make sure that all the areas are nicely smoothed out. With that all being said and done, guys, let's move on to the wood color. Now I have an assortment of colors here that I use for the albatross. So we have raw umber, we have burnt umber, we have raw sienna, we have yellow ochre. I'm going to mix these all up and I'm going to see what I can get. And I'm going to try and get a very nice dark wood color. Now, of course, this is very new to me. This is only my second time ever trying this technique, so we're going to really concentrate and we're going to see what we can come up with. Again, a beautiful wood color is what I'm going for that we'll be able to apply over the front of the cockpit, the cockpit floor, and any other areas like the seat that need to be that wood color. All right, guys, the wood grain is down. I love how it looks. We're going to add a bit of interest, though, by putting in some darker wood grain. Now, this has actually been drying for a couple of days, guys. So this is not wet paint. If this was wet, you would scrape the rest of it off. So you need to let it cure at least a couple of days, really, to get this a nice, secure finish. We're going to be using some raw umber to go ahead and streak it, give it some beautiful nuance, and really try and add some wood grain and some interest in the wood itself. Again, this is a very, very cool technique. I love doing it. I'm not really good at it, but I love doing it. 
So we're going to go ahead and do that all over all the different sides of the fuselage. Also, we're going to do the same thing on the cockpit floor. But here, I'm going to change it up just a little bit by adding a touch of violet to the mix. Now, some of the pictures I've seen, they have a bit of a darker wood appearance. And I really like that look. So I've added a bit of violet to go and try and bring out a little bit of darker tones. I'm just playing with ideas here, guys. It's all about experimentation and having fun. We're going to do the exact same thing on the seat as well because the seat is also wood. So we're going to be using our same technique. We've already painted it, so we're going to be streaking it, adding a little bit of interest to it. We have a bit too much paint here on the back of the seat, so I think a Q-tip to the back of this should help it kind of blend out and should take away some of that bulk. Again, you want to give it a couple of days to dry for sure. And while it's drying, I'm going to go ahead and take my hobby knife and we're going to open up a couple of areas. The instructions tell me to open up a small square on the bottom of the fuselage and also a rectangle on the top of the cowling on the fuselage. I'm not sure what these are for. I haven't looked that far ahead in the instructions, but I'm assuming it's some sort of attachment point. Let's also get the very top of it as well. Luckily, Edward gives you a very thin layer of plastic over these areas, so it's almost no effort to go ahead and remove them with a hobby knife. Even a basic jeweler file, a couple of swipes should take it clean off. That's looking really good, guys. I love it. Put these together, give it a nice little test fit. Yeah, very cool. We've got the square at the bottom. Nice. And we've got the rectangle up at top. Hopefully you guys can see that. Yeah, I don't know what it's used for, but it's ready to go for the next step. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and call it quits for today. We've done a lot of work. I'm going to do a little bit of touch up here with some aluminum. So thank you so much, guys, for going ahead and tuning in today. We will be back next week with another video here where we're hopefully going to start getting a little bit more interest done here on the cockpit. I'm going to go ahead and finish up a couple of bits and pieces here or painting off camera. So until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. Go out, have some fun, build something cool. And we'll see you guys back here for episode number three on the Great War Group Build. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you soon.